saying about me on Twitter? Wow, that's hurtful. I can't do this. I'm done. Hey, you see the garage door open. That's weird. Hey guys, Richard Rich Rebuilds here and I messed up really bad and I wanted to use this video to apologize for the dumpster fire I started on my last video. We had a customer come into the shop to get their vehicle serviced. They had a 2013 Tesla Model S that was only charging to 49 miles of range as opposed to over 200 miles of range the car normally gets. Now at the shop, we decided the best course of action was to discharge the pack remove the battery, replace individual modules that were reading lower than the rest of the pack, and when we installed the new modules, confirmed operation, reinstalled the battery, tested its charging a new range for a week under varying conditions, and then sent them on their way. And cue the dumpster fire. Now, a replacement battery pack is about $21,000, which is a lot of money, considering the car is only worth about twenty two. dollars to $25,000. The customer wanted a choice and didn't feel the need to spend the entire car's value on a battery that just wasn't cost effective to them. Now in the video on the screen, I used the amount of a Tesla battery pack on an invoice as a visual aid. Now on the invoice, it says 2019 and it clearly didn't happen in 2019. I didn't think too much of it because it's like when the History Channel shows a war scene or a crime scene show recreates a murder. No, they didn't actually recreate a strangulation or kill someone for the show. It's a visual cue since this is not a podcast, but it still happened. Anyways, the only way to really get a paper quote from Tesla is to drive your car to the Tesla to the nearest service center, which unfortunately was two and a half hours away from the customer's home, and it couldn't even get there because it didn't have the range. But over the phone, he was told it'd be about 21,500 or so. And that's where the Twitter detectives cracked the code. They figured it out. Damn, you guys are good. You looked at something, you pinch zoomed, screenshotted, and put it on Twitter and screamed, we got him, boys, he's a liar. Burn him. Shame. Shame. Now, the purpose of that was to really show an example of what you can expect to pay when you go to Tesla with an out-of-warranty car, not to falsify repair prices to make Tesla look bad, because that's literally the price whether you like it or not. But again, more on that later. Now guys, I get it. You don't like me and that's fine, neither do my kids. And many say I'm spreading FUD, which stands for fear, uncertainty, and whatever the last word is. Now here we go. I'm a shareholder and as a result, I too am at risk for Tesla's price fluctuations. Do you know what happens to the stock price when I make a video about Tesla? Absolutely nothing because I track it for sport. Or what it does for stopping Tesla new car sales, absolutely nothing. Hundreds of people still try to use my referral code that does nothing to continue to buy new cars. My videos do very little and to say I'm anti-Tesla is really only a few specific things I don't like about the company and I happily call them out. But I also praise them when they deserve praise or when I make a video showing people how to fix and service them. The problem I face is that most people only half listen, thinking I'm only picking on Tesla. Did you not see the RS7 turbo oil screen issue video, which is the worst design I've come across on a car, where Audi put a filter that's not serviceable before the turbo charges, so when they get clogged, the turbo starve and die? Did you miss that? Did you miss the i8, the $150,000 hybrid that gets 15 miles of electric range on a good day that looks like it's giving birth to a Porsche 911? Did you miss that? Did you miss that? Because I'm still missing that piece of plastic. Did you miss the clip where I praised the Model 3, saying it's the quintessential daily driver? Did you miss that? You probably did because you're super busy like we all are. You watch one minute of a 30 minute video and then form your opinion from there. Now let's have a discussion about incentives and what's in it to make these videos. Because no matter what anyone tells you, there is always a sale. Always look for the sale. Now, I make money from YouTube, so the sale is for you to watch these videos so I can eat Burger King. Now, the Electrified Garage is an interesting thing. When the garage was opened a few years back, I invested in it because I thought it was cool and I believed in it. 
It was a choice away from the monopoly in this area for electric car repair because when I ran into issues, Tesla wouldn't support salvage cars. So we opened the garage to provide another option for any EV. Now, fun fact, I don't make money from the garage. I'm part of it because I think it's a necessary thing in the world. So when people say, wow, he's really lining his pockets, pushing people to the shop, well, respectfully, no. Now, I might see that return on investment when I'm 69, but keep in mind, on average, black people don't live very long, so I'll likely be gone before then. Do you know what it's like running a business? No? Well, it's hard. It kind of sucks sometimes. In fact, I took a chance with kickstarting at the first independent EV repair shop in the New England area, and fun fact, I use Upstart to do it. Why, yes, in transparency, this is the promotion. This is the sale, but it's also actually what helped get the shop up because Upstart's fast and an easy way to pay off debt with a personal loan as it's all online with a five-minute online rate check. You can see your rate up front for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash rich rebuilds. And yes, of course, loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income, and other information provided in your application. I was good about maintaining my credit score, but upstart.com slash Rich Rebuilds. Don't forget to use that URL to let them know that Uncle Rich sent you directly. See, that was a promotion so I can have another Whopper and pay to fund more projects to make a video that has you laugh, be inspired, or marginally entertained at best. Now, repairs like the one we showed are not common because 99% of people go to Tesla for a battery or motor replacement. If they can't afford to fix it, they'll just sell it on Facebook Marketplace at a discount. What we don't see are these issues very often because let's be real here. We're only in two states, and it's not very common for people to ship their cars. It's mostly local traffic. So in terms of incentive for a low number, high risk repair, it's just not there. We're just simply showing you what's possible, which is exactly the reason why Tesla doesn't do individual modules. They'll just sell you a whole pack, which I explained on the dumpster five that is Twitter, where I stated the best repair is to place the battery pack as a whole. But of course you ignore that because who has the time to read something that goes against your long-rooted perception of an individual? That's just too much work. Now a man named Jason Hughes jumped in and because you all have issues with visual cues, this is not actually Jason. This is a fictional character from the show The Simpsons. And Jason, a well-known hacker, and I go back many a years when I was fixing Dolores on my Tesla Motor Club days, he let his opinion known that he did not agree with the repair. And he did the same thing multiple times, was not successful, and he stated the repair with last weeks to months tops a year. And you know, I really respect Jason. He's a very smart guy. And on Twitter, I said, hey, I respect your work. Big fan of all you've done for the community. And he casually reminded me that you got the social media thing going for you, but I've been doing this since 2014. Save some for the rest of us, Jason. Now I support anyone's right to call out something that they don't like. And I support Jason's words. And I really think he was just simply looking out for people, which is admirable. However, when he said our method doesn't work, I do wish he stopped right there. It would have been a flawless victory, but he says he offers a better and less expensive service. And there is the sale. What a coincidence. He just so happens to have a better solution to sell. I think that's awesome. But not everyone necessarily agrees, just like people don't always agree with me, people have done the same repair with excellent results. Another user, the CE278 on Tesla Motors Club, that offers a service as well, has tried similar methods and has driven over 100,000 miles and doesn't think Jason's claims are an accurate statement for everyone. This is not a PP swinging contest. I acknowledge and support people's right to choose, so let's do this. If a customer is dissatisfied, we will do what it takes to fix it, just like any respectable company that does. But if we replace the module of any car we've done so far, let me know at management at richrebuilds.com. And if it fails, I will offer you the choice of shipping your car to Gruber Motors, Jason Hughes, CE2078, or really any one of your choice, paying for the fix and shipping your car back at my cost. Is that fair? Here's why that solves everything. It's good for the customer to get their car fixed. It gives Electrified Garage a chance to learn, and it brings attention to other third-party repair shops. Never mind, just did that. So to me, it's about customers having a choice about servicing. Every time a small repair shop fights, Tesla sits back and laughs at us. I respect what he does. I encourage everyone to check him out and make a decision yourself. That's what I want everyone to do. Take a look and see what anyone else has to offer. Like they say, a rising tide 
raises all ships. This is why I've had videos with other shops doing similar things like we do and why we send customers to other shops that we believe their needs would be best suited elsewhere. I've done videos with EV West, Green Shed Conversions, Electric GT, Stealth EV, Jehu Garcia, Damian McGuire, Nginx, Phil from Engineerics, a ton of people. Remember those videos? Well, to most people, making videos in other shops is shooting yourself in the foot. And I'm here to let people know that there are great companies out there and you should consider ones that could best help you. Now back to the dumpster fire. My absolute favorite thing about Twitter is the echo chamber. Now if you're on team I hate rich for whatever reason, you are in fact entitled to your opinion. Just remember to form opinions based on looking at the entire picture. Let's jump back to that last video. Rich, why are you making up numbers about Tesla's repair prices to make Tesla look bad? Okay, well, let's look at the sources of the $21,000. Number one, the customer calling Tesla, asking about a battery replacement and giving them the VIN of an 85 car, they confirmed it would be $21,000 plus labor and parts. Two, going on Tesla's parts website and looking at prices of battery packs for that VIN, which was $21,000 plus labor and parts. Number three, confirmation from other sources that have had this issue and they paid $21,000 plus parts. Now the confusion I think lies in what Tesla has available at the time. The ones that have paid less are generally for lesser packs like 75s. However, a lot of the times Tesla may not have certain packs available and you have to get whatever they have on hand, which in this case was a 90 battery for $21,000. Now I'm gonna have some links to those threads below in the description box. I know you're not gonna read them because people don't really like reading to prove their point wrong, but for those that don't believe me, there are literally people I do not know that aren't on payroll saying these things with actual receipts. No matter what you feel about me, these are the prices that you can pay. Anyways, I'm getting cranky and hungry. Time to eat something. Stefan, what are you accomplishing today? What, what are we making today? What are we making today? Yeah. Some lemon pepper chicken. Ooh, some broccoli. Some yeah. green beans. Yeah. Some delicious uh, peppers. Mm -hmm. We're doing it for these fine people. For these people. Hey! Howdy! <laughs> Actually, what a huh? do, you, do you allow this? Is this okay? This for, is not for, okay. For me there? I think it's okay if I get to start the... What? I, I put the food directly on the thing next time. That's perfect. Yeah, start preparing. Preparing. If it was a MacBook, it would be a different story. Right, exactly. It's not, <laughs> not worth anything. <laughs> yeah. All right, we just had a good meal. How was the meal on a scale of uh, 1 to 10? Give it an 11. Oh, look at that. What do you think? I thought it was a 10. It was so sweet. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I had nothing to do with this. steve -on made all the food. I am not a tea... Oh, look at that. You got honey? Ooh! You're gonna have tea about honey? Ooh! Come on. Come on. Ooh, what else we got here? We got, we got a little tea action going. I didn't know we had one of these. What? Well, amazing. This, man. This is like a full... This is like a real deal thing here. This is like a real life... Like, oh, like living in the van. Mug? Where's the Richard oh, mug? What's that for? Yeah, this is the L mug. Yeah. You got tea in there? Tea? No, it's just battery acid in here. Oh, I hate right. Now, and I put them, I put them under here so they're warm. I can tell they're already warm. Yep, there you go. There you go. Let's 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 see them do the thing. Do the thing. Do the thing. Do the thing. We've never had that on the channel. No, You've we never, never have. Shown us doing it the proper way. Nope. Nope. Ah. Well, it seems yeah. like this is too large. Yeah, that mug's fall. a little bit. That mug is that, too that, large. That, that it's going to fall. That's an American mug, and that's a European. Yeah, this is. That's a bit much for yeah. that mug. Yeah, yeah. The American mug is always going to be bigger. Yeah, of course. We like to consume more. <laughs> you be really nice. Well, this you doesn't you, fit well. You could have put a blueberry on top, but you consumed yeah, all the like blueberries that. before we could do this. Uh, put a cashew on top. We'll put a cashew on it. Very European. This feels like it's just going to fall in there and get lost. I wouldn't worry about it. It's like timber soon. I, I think we're clear, just maybe just to consume it now. What are you doing? Are you waiting for that like, cashew to disappear? He, he's just, he's just staring. I don't, know, I don't know what, what his what expectations are. <laughs> what, what, what were you expecting gravity. exactly? It's going to defy gravity. And he's like gravity soldering feature. an ISO oh, 9240 oh. with a Zalmo. Like, this doesn't... Mm. Let's eat it. Pretty damn good, huh? Yeah, you missed the I love, cashew. I love how he said mm before it. he even Right, yeah. He it. knew. <laughs> well, he, he's had seven already, so that makes sense. He knows it's coming. I've eaten several of this. So, Louis, before we start this, this, um, this session, I just want to say... Um, that this will be on Patreon, and you're not allowed to post it on your channel. You sound like NBC. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was funny. Just to, just to, to give everyone a heads up, we uh, when we did the interview, um, like last week, uh, I said, you know what, it's fine, because the rest of this interview is going to be on Patreon, and everyone's like, yay, I can't wait to see it, and then they're like, wow, you jerk, like, why are you putting up a paywall? I was like, don't worry about it. 
All right, don't worry, I got this. And then four <laughs> hours later, hey, it's a full interview on on Lewis's channel. So, oh. so thank you very much, like a scumbag. It was moderately uh, disingenuous. <laughs> you saved me from having to use her to reenact it like I did with ABC. Oh. Hmm. It, no, it, it was a so the reason why we did that was because that um that interview doesn't really. The length of it didn't really fit in with the channel's normal course of like content, so I was just like, it's more like behind the scenes type of stuff. If but you post something that's different from what you usually post, then less people will view the video after that, and then less will view the video after that, right. and so on and so forth. Right. There's a common theme that runs through it, even if you may think it's totally ridiculous, the common theme of, I don't want someone else to control what I do with my property. What right do you have to say, I can't fix what I own? I'm right. gonna do what I want with what I own. I don't want you to control me through me, me fixing my device. The common thread that's tied my channel together are people that don't like tyrannical control over certain elements of society mm -hmm. that affect them as, as regards of what, what can they do with their property, what can they do with their life. Right. And there's that small common thread that kind of ties together all of the content, but also ties together the audience to some extent. Now think about it. what thread ties together crapping on the things that Elon does that are wrong in spite of the fact I've seen you enjoy, you know, uh, enjoy aspects of his cars right. while simultaneously calling him out on the asinine bullshit. Like, this is what we were promised. This is what we get. That was, yeah. That's that pisses concept. so many people off, but it's right. fucking true. Right. So you, you, you talk about that, but then you have a Tinder date. And then you make fun of Elon's robot for blackface, but you're not doing it in, an, in a social justice warrior way. It's, nope. it's like... It, it's funny. There, there's a common thread between all the content that you have. I don't know what it is, but either. like at some point when you hit on that, that's when you have this like a uh, super stack of of, of, of ability to create on YouTube. Right. I think you have to figure out what that is. I don't know. I, I'm think I'm just starting to figure out what mine is, which is people are just they're just tired of tyrannical control, regardless of where that comes from. Right. Oh, but yeah, but people take it. They take it really personally not realizing i'm just pointing out things that i'm seeing just like you are you go through the world you say hey i'm getting screwed here getting screwed here real estate does in fact suck new york is not for the small business owner you're just kind of like talking about your life like through your own eyes and we're doing the same thing but to us has been a little bit different because people really take it personally people see it as hey you know what i just spent 60, 70, 80, 100 thousand dollars on this car when someone says something that i don't like about it like I take it personally because this is my personal purchase. This is the car that I spend whatever, a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a month on. I feel attacked and I feel like I'm being put down because I chose to do this and now someone else doesn't like it. When people used to buy a product, I bought it because I love this or I need this, but I don't like this part of it. Now I think products that you buy are an extension of your identity. Right. So if you buy a Tesla, I think to some extent people have that this is an extension of my identity. When you criticize the product, you're actually, you're not criticizing the product. You're criticizing me personally. You're saying that I'm bad. Right. And it's not. Like, I use a ThinkPad. Oh, I, I like the product. And uh, the, the thing that, I, the um, you know, them putting super fierce spyware on there, if somebody says that's really dumb, mm -hmm. I don't take it personally. I bought it because it's liquid resistant. I like the track point, And it's very difficult to break. If you drop it or something, it's not just going to have the grommets fall apart like Acer, HP, and you know, every other brand. I like that. But yeah, they do things. And if somebody says that they did a thing i know why i bought the product and i acknowledge the thing it's just right. there's a balance of i balanced the good against the bad and it made sense for me i don't it's not a core part of my identity it's old lenovo or you say the thinkpad p50 is too thick or when it falls on my foot it hurts not is that, is that you falling your foot the screen oh, no. doesn't remember yeah. oh god the screen has bad north, gamma the north remembers <laughs> <laughs> no, the screen has bad gamma or black levels or, or it's not accurate or whatever like i don't take it personally I'm right. like, yeah you're right what would prompt the person to have like a, a seven or eight page dissertation about why what you're doing is wrong because we get we get that a lot we're saying this is wrong because of this you're wrong because of this these are the reasons why you're terrible and I hope your kids never get to adult age. Like, it's a crazy stuff that well, they I have think, to say. I think people's identity used to be somewhere else and now it's in the people they vote for and in the pe and in the products that they buy rather than their identity being rooted in something else. Right. And I think that's happening all across society. Well, you own and operate a Tesla. Yes. Um, how come How come when we, we, we make a video saying that Tesla didn't do this so great or I don't believe this is, this is good, how come you're not in the comment section telling me how much of an idiot that, that we are? Like that, that car is not an extension of my identity. I want an electric car that I can use for a road trip around the country right, that has right. enough range to do it and enough charging stations. And nothing else exists that does it. There's really, there's not really the only one. I, I, yeah. have, I have no illusions about, about Elon, about his build quality. So you don't have FSD? 
I got that solely because I wanted to be able to do videos on what a fail it was, and I fully intended to recoup that via YouTube. <laughs> but I'm like, I, I got, yeah, yeah, me I, too. Yeah, I, I'm fair. using that for video. I, right. Because, like, the, for instance, the newest one, like, it actually it, it went from being able to get off on exits to it gets scared, it starts taking the exit, and then yeah. it goes right over we, the we solid line. We literally saw that. We yeah. Did that yeah. yeah, and then it goes, Tesla yeah, and then it goes right over the line again. Like, I want that for video. It, like, I got spoiled by electric after three years of messing with electric bikes. Mm. I did. I, I started driving a. a a gas car and I was like I, I just I don't want to drive a gas car right. I wanted something that was electric but I also wanted to be able to ride around the country with me right. what's the cheapest way I can do that and sadly that was this that was it now if somebody else comes along that makes something with real build quality mm -hmm. that doesn't creak when you drive it under 5 miles an hour that uh, offers repair and serviceability through third parties yes all of these things it's crazy I would yeah. that I would get it right now I thought to myself oh you know what I should get a Ford uh, Mach-E Mach -E, or yeah. a Chevy Bolt so that at least I'm buying from a company that supports right to repair exactly. so now if they did make a car and it cost more money than this one and it was worse but it was serviceable right then at least I could say okay you know I, I paid a little bit more like with this for like like, like a framework laptop like this right. like, again you get this you may pay a tiny bit more this is not this an screen. ad oh, you want to replace the screen on it yeah. sure. what? What? Yeah, it just comes yeah see screws Magnus. up there it just does this it's beautiful I would buy another one of this if this thing broke if she were to spill the, 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 the mug on it that she was trying to spill for the cutting, hour she before cut, she filmed she it cutting food on this, yeah. she was, was cutting food on my laptop yeah. and she was putting her tea on top of it right. troll yeah but anyway, was a plate, though. But if I w if this I would get another one of it because at the very least there's an option or like you know what I got something that's repair friendly if right. I were to get a Chevy Bolt or a Ford Mach E, yeah. not only am I buying something that is uh, slightly worse per dollar in range and everything else, and the probability of having a, a battery fire is close to both. I didn't even know about 90%. that at the time. Now I, yeah. <laughs> it's not even like I get the warm and fuzzy feeling of knowing I bought from a pro right to repair car, ma car maker. Like th that doesn't, it's not even there. My personal sense of confidence, identity, self-worth is not attached to the car that I drive. It's not attached to Elon Musk. It's not attached to somebody criticizing him. Right. And I would probably be the first to criticize it because I bought the product. I want it to be better. So I, how is it going to get better if I don't say when they fuck something up? The problem is, is that it elicits a very strong emotional response. Absolutely. I mean, oh run with my it. gosh. They run with it because they're, you know, the thing is, is like when people look at Elon Musk, they, I think they think of him as like a deity. I think, I, honestly, <laughs> Savior. honestly, it's, it's like the father they never had. God, uh, Emperor Musk. No, no, honestly, no. You're getting deeper into it. It's, and it's, I think it's, this it's, has, it's the father, they, if they look at it as a father figure or they want to be connected with something. For example, most people couldn't tell you who the CEO of Ferrari is or, or no. Ford is Any other or company. GM is. No. So, and I think there's also the attachment to the environmental aspect of it, because when you have a regular car, mm -hmm. when you have Mercedes versus BMW, they'll bicker about who's better, who has a better leather, who who has, you know, the least amount of working for their company in third world countries. They'll argue about that, but at the end of the day, that's it. You compare horsepower, you compare this, 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 they're both two German cars, who cares? Mm -hmm. With Tesla, you have a different aspect. You have, hey, I have a Tesla, it's better than your gas car because this, this, and this reason, which is fine, but you also have the environmental impact too, which is like, wait a minute, why are you still driving that piece of crap gas car? Electric's for the future, and I'm mm -hmm. saving the planet, and there's seven more dolphins on, on yeah. the, in the ocean because I drive this car. <laughs> the whole rolling coal thing? Yeah, oh gosh. So, yeah. Yeah, like when I, when I was driving it uh, through Pennsylvania at one point, someone like would just went in front of me in and rolled coal. Car. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they saw like a white electric car in New York plates. It's like, I think this is hysterical yeah I'm gonna, I'm so, so, but it, it's a culture war backlash that's created to the point where when people see this uh, that type of fanboy they think i want to destroy the environment because i hate you right it's like just this bit to show you how much i hate but you know it, it seems like people are wrapping in their eagles with it so if you attack their favorite brand it feels like their eagle is getting bruised i think so too i do yeah. think so i think everyone wants their team to win yeah. and i think a lot of people have to remove themselves from that like i have to realize that you know what, like, this isn't the best or fastest car in the world. And like, if someone's better or faster or more environmentally friendly, I have to get over that. Everybody yeah. wants to believe in something. And yeah. Elon has become that Bruce I think he, Wayne, Tony Stark. I think yeah. he's given that to people. Thing and he's given people hope and, and to, you know what, like you, you can, we can do well, this Well, that is together. a pretty good come up. You know? I mean, it's, how it's, I, it's, it's an excellent come up, but again, it's, it's the environmental impact. There's very few things 
Technological too. Technological too. He's a guy like, with Asperger's that was but, worth over a hundred billion dollars. That's going to be a father figure to a lot of people. Yeah. He, he, yeah. he he admits he has Asperger's. Yeah. And he's also a giant troll, and he's worth over a hundred billion dollars. I think people are like, we're I, at the I point, want that. Oh, you're a giant troll. You're worth over a hundred billion dollars, and you're the CEO of one of the h- highest market cap car companies like and i think that combines in with this threat of people not having an identity mm-hmm. and also looking up to these father figures but they're looking for father figures on the internet i i, I always try to reinforce in live streams and in videos like don't f-ing look up to me you will no. be very you will oh. be very disappointed there are so many people that look up to me that and they say wow oh, i can't believe i'm amazing no i'm not that amazing no, I, no. I, i'll make videos yeah. describing all the stupid no, that i've done I way more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't and I, I see i don't get that i think that's part of it too. People are always looking for someone to look up to. Someone's always looking for a role model or some kind of father figure. And I ain't it. Kids are watching this. Like, you should set a good example. How come you're not doing this? How come you're not wearing your seatbelt? How come you didn't shave your beard? It's like, set a good example, but it's like, but wait a minute, no. I'm, we're doing this for ourselves. People don't understand that you could take certain aspects from people, but not all aspects of people. You could say, you know what? I like these things, I like these things. I'm going to take these on my own identity, but the rest I'm going to leave. It's like people think that you have to be this giant, encompassing, perfect orb of, of, of cleanliness and perfection so that you are allowed to make videos on YouTube. But it's just like, well, that's not the case. Like, I'm not perfect. I do like off-color jokes. I do like dark humor. I love dark humor. You know, but it's like people don't understand that. Like, I, oh, you can't like those things? Why do you have, what's up with that big butt girl in the thumbnail in the videos? Get her out of there. This kid's watching this. It's like, well, I'm, I'm sorry that you're that you can't watch a video with a woman in it that has clothes on with your wife because she's jealous. That's that's not my problem, it's not my fault. I try to be as upfront and genuine as I can about the fact that I ain't it. Yeah. Like, no. don't, don't. The more you dig in, the more you're just, you're just gonna be disappointed. Yeah. And yeah, then seriously. you'll get that one comment, it's like, I followed you for six years and now I learned that X. Like, right. now I learned that you prefer crunchy peanut butter. That's what it is. And it's pe- always something. It's that moment you get that six page conference and be like, I would have respected you for, but after six years, I know that you said this. And it's like, go There's away. always that one key moment. Just it's just like, after all those years. Just don't respect me to begin with. It this is easy. what you decided to, this This is what, what triggered it. Like, oh, the, exactly. You said the whole crunchy peanut butter thing. I followed this channel for six years and you released a video about taking someone's wife to Olive Garden. I'm out of here. Society has just eroded to perfection. They want to have that. I, I know you're frustrated with Tesla and their build quality, but you have to understand that their build quality depends on how many cars they're pushing out at that time of the year. If it's the end of the quarter, they have to do a certain amount. So all we ask is that you be understanding uh, when it comes to Tesla's build quality, because sometimes some cars like that may slip through the cracks and it's very rare. It's not very common. And you have, to, you, have to, you have to be very understanding of the company. They're in their growth phases. Oh, they're Both. worth more than Ford and General Motors and, combined! And, and you and you have to understand that. You have to give them a break. They're Sim. trying really hard. And when changing the world takes hard work. They With have your, a higher market cap than Ford, General your, Motors, and Toyota combined. You're, no, growing you're, like the production itself. They're growing. Like, like when you make, making the robots. Like, yeah, when, when you're making more cars and Take, you have to deliver them to people. Again, like quality. Issue more shares, use the shares to raise money for the company, get your production in order. There's a lot of people working very hard in tents, in little huts in California to pump these cars <laughs> I out. I feel for those people. You know, we just need to be more understanding right now. No. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I know. That's a, it's a giant <laughs> sarcasm. That is sarcasm. The only way yeah. you could trigger him more if you say a very small percentage. Yes, a very, no, like somebody said a very were... small percentage of that. That doesn't happen often at all. That's a very rare thing. Tesla and build quality, like your issues that you saw in your car, never happened to anyone nope. else. The thing is, there are people that have said at the in the comments, you lied about this, Lewis. You didn't say that your car was from the end of the quarter. What do you mean lie? I didn't mention it. Well, why does that even matter? I mean, with any other car company, who gives a what time you buy it in the year? If you pay 10000 for a car or 100000 for a car, you expect for it to come fully f***ing assembled. This isn't Ikea, this is like you bought half of it. Like, no, fully assembled Lewis, f***ing vehicle. Lewis, uh, you have to understand Tesla is a very new company. They're very new. They haven't, I mean, they've been making cars how many years now? 12 years now? <laughs> Ford's been around for, you know, a century. Yeah, 100 years. <laughs> decades. They're very new. Like, decades. Lewis, you understand? 
Listen, like, before you write them off completely, just give them <laughs> 10 more years. 10 more years, they'll have build quality just like everyone Fine, else. Fine, in 10 years, they'll give you the rest of the money for the car. Just give, yeah, just give them a chance right now. Yeah, we, give them another chance. Buy we, another Tesla. Yeah, we, we ask you to give them a chance. That mindset comes from someone who believes that this, they've bought into the idea that they're saving the planet by this. And if saving the planet means being a simp for a company that has flaws, they will choose that because that mission is more important. Rather than a simply state the fact that we care about climate change, we want more people to adopt electric vehicles and Teslas because once the energy grid actually gets onto more green energy, because I think right now it's mostly oil and shit. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. We need more EV adoption so that we can get that we, we can push for there to be a point to all this charging infrastructure being green. Once right. that happens, we're saving the environment and we want to do that. And okay, yeah, if the trim on your car is a little screwed up, listen, that sucks. We're trying to save the world. Right. There's a better mission here. Instead of saying, you know what? Yeah, they f***ed up. This is stupid that they screwed up but we'd like to that we believe that by doing this we are saving the world so we're willing to deal with that they go no 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 you have to understand it's a growing company it actually will create a cultural war backlash they're going to associate that level of simping because we're a very tribalistic society with people who care about the environment and green energy and that's where the backlash against that is going to be people saying i want i don't want 12 miles a gallon i want to buy a car that gets two miles a gallon mm -hmm. so i could stick it to those and then they're going to stop caring about the environment. They're going to stop caring about climate change. They're going to stop you, caring about you, pollution and green energy you. because they associate all of those things would with be, those f***ing comment sense. sections. Yes. And that's, and what, that's horrible. Yep. Yeah, nope. You're absolutely right. When when they see the people, uh, a lot of Tesla owners that are crying and simping over dumb sh** on, uh, on, on forums, they see them as weak. Like, okay, cool. These are beta males. Awesome. I don't want to drive a beta male car. Therefore, I'm going to buy an F-350 diesel. I'm going to roll coal on every single Tesla that I see. Car gets associated with people that have no backbone. And I, I don't want that to be the future. I don't want people to think that green energy or any of this stuff or and having an environmentally it's sustainable bad, company, right. a cult of personality, fan base of, of people that don't have father figures, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's, all this. I call them, that's fatherless behavior. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> that's, 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 father, that's fatherless behavior right there. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I don't want all of that and all of that to be associated with this. And once something becomes a culture war, you have immediately lost. There's no yeah. winning a culture war. Absolutely. Because once people are entrenched, and I hate those people so much, I'm going to do the opposite. But what do you think the likelihood is that in t like ten years from now we look back and the entire Tesla revolution was one of the worst things that happened for green energy, sustainability, and people's perception of it because they associate the move to more sustainable energy with cults of personality and fanboys that rapidly attack everybody. I, I, I think, I do think that is a big risk. I will say though, that's gonna be more dependent on the actual brand itself. That's human because, psychology. Because because now that other brands are coming out, you have like, you have GM, you also, have yeah, Mustang. Yeah, but it's, it's dependent on if the brands actually do come up with the things. Because think we, about yes, it, all of them right. have their- But those 20, are me two offerings. Yes. Well, they, yes. They have all their 2035, yeah. we're gonna switch our entire lineup, but they're yeah, waiting. Luck. They're giving themselves that decade of time to see if Tesla fails or doesn't. I think that Tesla, unfortunately, is, is synonymous a lot of the times with, uh, with really great cars that don't have great build quality. Assuming that manufacturers come out with real reliable Tesla competitors, as they say, which I know people will shoot me for saying that because there is no competition to Tesla. I think once they actually, <laughs> you know how that's gonna go. There is no competition! Assuming a brand does come out with, act with an actual viable electric vehicle product that's good, that people aren't simping over, I think that's what's gonna start leading the charge. In your opinion, does one exist? Because you were saying that the fans claim that that isn't true. And as someone, again, I don't have a lot of knowledge of cars, but I was doing my general do research. Do I? I want to do a trip. <laughs> I want to be able to do a road trip around the country, right. not have range anxiety between stops if I'm going to Montana, and uh, and be able to drive something that's electric. Right. What, what, are, the, what are the options? I could <laughs> honestly say that you, you can't deny it that Tesla is, is the choice. People could say all they want about, hey, well, there's the Mach-E that just came out or there's a Taycan, the Porsche Taycan that, that came out as well, you're not getting the bang for the buck that you are with literally a, a, a base Model 3 at this point. You're just not. Tesla has extreme leg up over anyone else, and that's the supercharging network, no matter how you slice it. People can say all the time, well, don't forget about Electrify America. I've used Electrify America. I, I didn't have, remember I didn't have supercharging on Dolores. Still don't. When it works, it works when it doesn't work it doesn't work at all i use that plug share app and i can see everything around including mm -hmm. that like high you know high powered ones low powered ones right and there are so many areas of the country where you just it's just like a big dead spot yeah and not only that but like even when they say oh this is fine if you want an actual fast charging one 
those are even less available. I've I've driven it and Whereas, it's not. It's just it's just not there. But like when Tesla uh, sells a pile of plastic that's poorly put together for thirty five to seventy eight thousand dollars, there's right. enough profit there to be able to at least make sure that the charging stations work. But the infrastructure here is so old. I'm surprised when I see you have eight two hundred fifty kilowatt chargers just sitting mm -hmm. next to each other. Like, how do you even do that on? America's infrastructure. I think it's going to come in time. I think a lot of companies is how can we monetize this? A lot more time, money, and resources will be put into it. I think electric cars will populate a lot of the areas of the United States where there's better infrastructure. And I think where all the hill and gold people are, they'll still drive their there's old. There's still school. more horses out there, anyways. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll just, just, just yeah. Just speak yeah, yeah real. Look at him when you say goat. Well, no, because it's it's funny because he says he, <laughs> we, he's, we, we, we we have that joke all the time. Um, <laughs> so so I think yeah, I think once. What are the country, answers they have to the fact that most of those recharging stations right now are powered by fossil fuels to begin with? Like, well, what what would the the people in your comments or the fans say to that? They would say that the electric revolution is coming, and a lot of them are powered by alternative fuels like alternative energy sources like the sun. Because that's an like, interesting. A lot of them are. There are solar farms that power a lot of the Tesla superchargers. So if it's powered by fossil fuel sources because it's not worth it to move it over until there's a lot of EVs, mm -hmm. but people are not going to buy EVs if their chargers are still powered by old fossil fuel energy. So it's just it's like this chicken and the egg thing where somebody has to kind of decide. Sort of. Under the economics, that's cheaper. And, and that hasn't been put out there for people. You know, I mean, it's 75% less for me to fuel a charge an electric car than it is to go put gas in an engine. Not only that, but and that's a fact. Most people. A lot of people do use supercharger networks. Yeah. The majority of people charge at home. If, if you're buying and at home, you have more control over where that source. If comes you're from. buying a fifty thousand dollar car because it's slightly cheaper than to putting gas in your like a twenty thousand dollar car, mm -hmm. I think at that point people are convincing themselves with their brain to do something that they emotionally wanted to do, like they right. want this. I didn't get that because it was cheaper gas. I just got it because after years of messing around with electric motors and enjoying it and trying a gas car, and it's just. Like, wait, it's, it's it's moving when I take my foot off the... Why? Yeah. Why is it making noise when I turn it on? Why is right. smoke coming out? It's just weird. Like, I enjoyed and I got used to dealing with electric motors on all the different bikes that I built and Cyclones and BBS HDs and all these other things. And mm -hmm. I just felt weird using a gas car at that point. My reason for driving an electric car, which I, I which I don't now, it, dude, the car, I love cars. It's just the coolest thing ever. It looks great. It's cool. It's fast. And I was like, I got to have this thing. For me, I looked at it as more of the performance and manufacturing an actual aspect of it being a great all-around car. I think as time went on, I realized, wait a minute, this is kind of cool. Like I could plug this in to my friend's house and he uses solar panels to charge his home and he has a battery bank and he's completely off grid. And I plug my car in here and it's like a life cycle where you could actually charge your car like from the power of the sun. I was like, that's kind of cool technology wise. I think it's fascinating. And I think over time, that's when I realized, wow, this is this is pretty neat technology. And then I went back to gas. So yeah. <laughs> you said that you don't show up in the in the garage videos because you're not certified, but you fix cars. What was that about? I don't actually work on any customer cars. Any customer cars that show up at the shop, I don't I don't touch at all. I have the the guys do it because they they're former Tesla techs. I was confused because they thought it sent me a message as someone who's uninformed when it comes to car mechanics and repair that there is some that there is something to be certified that makes a difference. The internet's a funny place where it's just like, well, I don't want this per who's working on my car. Uh -huh. I don't I don't know who's working on this car because some of the things that I did in the past and even kind of now I'm like Oof. I don't have to really I don't have to really do it this way. I could do this and use a zip tie here and people see that and I don't want people to think associate. that you're doing that when you're well, we weld in flip flops and people are like, what the hell? That's yeah, right. going to be working on my car. So that's why we do these projects. Like this is our own thing. Whatever right. we did to this, well, we buy yeah. the ticket, you take the ride. Right. So that was it for the most part, because the things I do in personal time on personal projects, I don't want people to think that those are done on actual customer cars. So we have them work on them instead. I never thought about that when doing videos with like oh, 20 geez. wires on a board before. Yeah, it's like for you, like, you, you know, you I, have, I, it's obvious. I'm giving this back to a customer with those 20 wires on there. <laughs> you know, you have like those around video where you're doing something and it blows up and you're like, oh, that sucks. That's a customer there's board. A little more, yeah, but there's a little more That's liability to a, to a car crashing yeah, that was faulty. Because yeah. I'm not saying the car, the laptop can't catch fire, but... That is liability. They may miss out on their Facebook notifications that evening. Yeah, but you you, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. I'm right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, that's enough. This went on for two and a half hours, and I feel bad that I snubbed you guys last week. So I included a lot more of our conversation this time. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. And guess what? I'll see you guys next week as usual.